Good evening. I'm Jamie Petras of Borman High School TV, along with my co-host, Attorney Mark Huberman. And we are very excited to bring to you another establishment of Borman Biography, a BSTN program devoted to profiling educators and community leaders who have made significant contributions to the Borman schools and or the Borman community. In selecting today's guest, we have my favorite Borman. <laughs> One whose multi-leveled contributions to the Boardman Schools, Boardman Township, and our community have no peer. She is uh, the recently retired member of the Boardman Township Trustees and my former partner on the Board of Education, Elaine Mancini. Elaine, welcome to Boardman Biography. Welcome, thank you. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Jamie. Okay, before getting started into um, your contributions to Boardman, um, let's talk a little about your road how you came to Boardman. Um, where did the Garamones live? Um, You're a Garamone, right? As my Garamone. There you go. <laughs> we, I grew up on uh, Mistletoe Avenue in uh, Youngstown, Ohio. It's one street over from Boardman. So you're never far from Boardman. Never far from Boardman. Yeah. And, and in actuality, when my father wanted to build a home in the Boardman Township, uh, there was a restriction just you know, fair housing came in like in 1949 or something, and my father wanted to build in 38, and he could not build. He could no, that's not an get interesting along. thing. Yes. Talk about that a bit. Deed restrictions. Right. There was a deed restrictions against Catholic ethnic and Hebrews other, like right. myself, like my parents. <laughs> same thing. Couldn't build right. in the Glen. Right. So we, uh, he built a home right on Mistletoe, which was one street over from Boardman, and um, I attended um, Sheridan Princeton Junior High School in South High School. Um, I went to college part-time, but I really had this great desire to get into the business world and start working right away. And so when I graduated from school, I went to Comptometer School, which is totally obsolete. It was the prelude to the adding machine, if you would believe. You had to go to a special school to learn how to do all these 12, 144-digit numbers to add things up and divide and everything. Well, before jumping ahead to that. Oh, okay. How did you get to Boardman? How did I get to, I yeah. got to Boardman when I got married. Oh, okay, so your, uh, your right. family grew up on Mistletoe, right. we were and that's where you all remained. And, right. and what did your parents do? My father owned a wholesale grocery and wine distributing ship, mm -hmm. and um, my two brothers went into business with him. Um, he wasn't a bootlegger, was he? Oh, no, oh, oh okay. no, I could tell you a lot of stories about <laughs> <laughs> Where his about supply came from? and like, uh, <laughs> crazy things that happened in his life. Mm -hmm. and um, But no, he was just a hardworking um, grocer. Where was and the store? It was on uh, Dewey and South Avenue, the corner of Dewey and South Avenue. Is there still something there where the no, store was? No, they've taken it down. I think there's a used car <coughs> lot there now. Gotcha. What so, did your mother do? My mother was a homemaker. Okay. Uh, there were five of us and she sewed and she baked. She was the ultimate homemaker because uh, she had a love of what she was doing and she did it all very well because she enjoyed taking care of other people. Cooked and, pasta and made oh, lots of sauces. Bread, she made bread and pizza every, every Friday. And the funny thing is, uh, they call it Briar Hill Pizza now, but when we were growing up, that was our pizza. Just tomato sauce and macaroni cheese and a little bit of oregano every Friday. She'd have it ready when we came home from school and fresh bread. I mean, it was an enjoyable childhood. And you said there was five of you. There were five of us, tell two me, brothers and two sisters. Tell me a little about them. Um, my older brother, Gene, uh, attended uh, YS, well, it was Youngstown College in that day, but then he went to the service and uh, he was like in the CIA. <laughs> it was like wow. a, an intelligence area of the uh, government, uh, army at that time. But my father um, had been in business with my uncle for like many years, 20 years. And it just, something came up and they split in business. And my father started to open his own business in 1950. And my brother left the service and came home to help him uh, start his business up. And he worked there until it closed in 1985. And your sisters? And uh, my other brother went straight from high school to the store to okay. work. He also served in the Army two years, though. He went in after he served his time. My older sister, um, Marie, she went to the Villa Maria, which I was supposed to go to. Uh, that was a Catholic boarding school in Bedford, Pennsylvania, but we were going to move uh, when I was a sophomore, and 
that's when I was going into high school, um, I'm sorry, in ninth grade when we came from Princeton to South High School. Um, we were, were going to move and I canceled my reservation. I never got in. I could, when we decided not to move to Denver, I came back and I couldn't get into uh, the villa and so I went to South High School. And then my other sister had entirely uh, Catholic education through St. Dom's and Cardinal Mooney and she went on to be a, a counselor, a psychologist. And uh, she had a crazy career because she loved to fly. She gave it all up. She worked for Cook County uh, as a counselor to domestic violence and alcoholism and des domestic abuse. And she loved to fly, so she gave it all up and got a job with United Airlines so she could fly free everywhere. <laughs> and she worked there for uh, many, many, many years until she retired at 9-11. Um, about a year later, they, the Air, airlines, United Airlines, offered everybody a That's retirement Joanne. package. That's Joanne. That's Joanne. And your other sister? Is Marie. And she worked for the government. Okay. She went on to work for the government. You, you're speaking uh, oh. pretty glowingly about them. Oh, I I'm proud of all of them. I gather, yeah. <laughs> you guys pretty close? Oh, yes, very close. Do you get together? Oh, yes. Um, the two of them have uh, moved to Las Vegas, which is very nice. I bet that's very nice. <laughs> very nice to go visit them. Uh, Joanne lived many years in Chicago, and then after um, her husband got a promotion, and the only place they could both work, she was working for the airlines, and he was working for Harris Corporation, was in Las Vegas, so they had to move there so they could be together because otherwise it was a long commute back So she had a connection to Harris? Uh, yes, my brother-in-law worked there. Oh. He was in the technical division and he, uh, he started out on the, uh, when they started gambling on, in Juliet on the Des Plaines River, he was in charge of uh, the computer system and things like that. And he kept getting promotions and he had to go to Memphis and he was, <sighs> going back and forth to Memphis and they decided no the place to be is together and they went to Las Vegas so then my older sister retired she decided she wanted to go back with family and she said well I'm thinking of coming back to Ohio but the next thing I knew she moved to Las Vegas because of the weather so both and sisters she loves it they're both there That's right and we try to see each other um, we go out twice a year and they come in once or twice you a limit year. how much you you, you invest when you go to the <laughs> casinos? We have to beg them to take us to the casinos. <laughs> <laughs> it's strictly family visit. You're not a casino person? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I like to go. We, we set aside one day and we go down. And you set aside one block of money? Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> An envelope money. and when, when it's gone, it. it's gone. Very good. So South High School. South High School. I don't School. want to date you here, but what year did you graduate? 54. 54. Mm -hmm. And do you, uh, do you remember any of your classmates that oh, were, we, we're very, around here? Oh, we're very close. We have a uh, class reunions every five years. I'm on that committee forever. And um, we're just a very close group of people that went through growing up together and just stuck together. I mean, just a great big class of friends. So how'd you meet the love of your life? Well, I met him at school. High school sweethearts? But no, we were just good friends. We were Italian buddies. We used to say little words and hey, kumbad or something like that. How you doing? And go. We both had other romantic interests and everything. He went away to college, and then um, the, his senior year, we just kept in college. We just kept running into each other all the time. And uh, I had um, started to work at McNicholas Transportation, and they had a Christmas party, and we were all to ask somebody, and I asked him, and that was it. I just had to push him a little bit. <laughs> oh, I see. He said yes. I he said yes, and I that's see. it. <laughs> and did you honeymoon anywhere? Um, we went up to uh, Lake George, New York. Mm -hmm. We had a. It's bizarre today because we took two weeks, and then we went up uh, through Montreal. And Saint Anne is a favorite saint of mine, and we went in, up to Saint Anne du Beaupre, which is way up in Upper Quebec. But I always wanted to go to her shrine and. And you then did. we came down to the Thousand Islands, and then we went to Niagara Falls, and then we came up. Wow. So, great. So your husband, what's he do? What did he do? He is a retired. Frank. Uh, yes, he's okay. a retired coach, teacher, principal. Um, he started out at Springfield Local, and he was the head football coach. Then he left there, and he went to McDonald for three years, and he was assistant football coach there. And in 1971, he went to Austin Town Fitch as a social study teacher 
and coach. Where did you get the name Chico? Oh, the, he grew up on the east side where all, a lot of the Italians uh, lived. And they, uh, the neighborhood, he was a little Frank, so they called him Chico. And it just stuck with him from when he was a child, running the neighborhoods. And, and everybody, even his college, everybody knows him as Chico, but he's really Frank. <laughs> okay. Now I understand that you had three children in three years. Uh, three sons. Three sons in three Every years. Every 18 months. Never knew the secret of a girl. <laughs> I, no. <laughs> and I wasn't going to find out. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, it was quite a, they, they've grown up together. They're very close. They're all 18 months apart, and they're all boys, and uh, they are all boy. Now, what do they all, like, what does, what are their names? Frank, I Frank, think Dominic. Dominic, and Joseph. And what do they do? Uh, Frank is a social study teacher at, um, Alliance High School, and he was the head wrestling coach up till this year. He's, uh, I'm sorry, up till last year, he became assistant because he's more involved in his daughter's soccer lives. And uh, Dominic is a business manager for children's rehab in Howland, and he is also the head wrestling coach at Boardman High School. And Joseph, Joseph is a principal at Elwood City High School, and he's uh, the youth wrestling coach for Boardman. You speak pretty glowingly about them too. <laughs> it's a mother. There you go. Very much so. It's a mother's heart. When I came on the school board, or when I became interested in the Boardman schools after coming back from law school and all of that, um, I recall that you were real active in PTA. Yes. How did that come about? Uh, well, when my first son started in kindergarten, um, I realized there was such a Must thing. Must have as been Market Street, right? Market Street, you yes. Were Stanton right. Avenue, you're still right. there. Still there. Uh, I, there was such a thing as room mothers, and I found, oh boy, this is you know good. I can contribute and I can help. So I started out as a room mother, and, and then it went to committees, and then as they progressed through the years, through the middle school and the high school, it became uh, officer of the organization at different levels. Were you and, head of uh, every level? Uh, no, uh, I actually at uh, Glenwood Middle School I was president of the PTA, and at the high school I was president of the PTA. And um, they wanted me to be president of council, but I, I was too committed with a lot of activities and work and everything. And I said I would be vice, prin uh, vice uh, president. And so I never became council president. But I was never, I, I just did what I had, you know, could do to help. Did PTA um, change over the years since you were involved with that? Uh, there are a lot more working mothers today. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot more women that were stay-at-home moms when I was involved in the uh, late 60s, 70s, and 80s. And was there any ever um, involvement with fathers? Uh, we had a few fathers, but very rare, mm -hmm. very rare. So the numbers rare. went down over the years, the number of participants in PTA because of I, all the working mothers? I think it's mothers. harder and harder for them. A lot of women have full-time jobs. And I was very fortunate. Um, I worked for McNicholas Transportation, and. Uh, I worked there six years full time, and then when I started having having children, they accommodated me, and I could come in one day a week, or I came in two nights and on a Saturday. And then, when they were all in uh, elementary school, they let me work the hours that I could, nine to two. And I was involved in PTA, and they said, "Oh, go to your meeting, and then just come in afterwards." So I was very fortunate that I had an employer that. Uh, permitted me to be involved in PTA, permitted me to work, and permitted me to be at home with my children at times. If I remember right, you were the first inductee to the PTA Hall of Fame? Uh, no, right? I was the second. Oh, the second, Connie, Connie Connect? Connect was first. There you go. Right. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Well, our lives began their, uh, <laughs> our, our wonderful intersection in the summer of 1983. As right. I recall, we both decided to run for the school board. Right. What prompted your involvement? Well, as a uh, being involved in PTA as an officer and other committees, we uh, used to go to the, the Board of Education meetings. So I was familiar with the dynamics of the board meetings at that time. There was, uh, it was a different era. And um, I felt when my last son graduated in 1983, and I said, you know, really, I could, I could help them because I know a lot about the Board of Education, a lot of uh, kids and I could contribute, so I decided to run. It was just a fluke. I mean, I just... Nobody asked you? Nobody, nobody asked you? me. I just decided I, if I could contribute in some way, I would. And so I gotta ask you, 
something yeah. I always wanted to know when I was okay. campaigning <laughs> with you, fortunately. <laughs> From then on, we campaigned together because we were always, the two of us were always up. Right. Other three and two. I always wondered a strategic advantage. Were you really Boom Boom Mancini's aunt, or did everybody oh, think no. that? Oh, uh, yes, uh, some people did, but it's odd. Her, his relation? mother, none at all, because when he became famous, uh, we tried to cash in on his fame, and his mother told us that, my dear, our, our name is Mancino. Is that right? And we're from Niles. <laughs> so I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we couldn't cash in on the Mancini name. Well, those were uh, very, very different times in the Boardman schools. Oh, they we started. were. We, I, I like to say sometimes we went from the worst of times during our tenure to, the I best think we probably our, say the best of times. Right. And I just want to run a couple names by you to see okay. what, what, My what reaction? they jog. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Bob Amaduri. Bob Amaduri. Mm -hmm. He was one of the reasons that I ran because he was sort of a dissident board member. His, his actions were against the school rather than with the school. And being this PTA person, like this was a foreign thing to me. I mean, like I thought everybody was good and helpful and they worked to the betterment of their cause. And uh, I, was, I was determined, you know, I was gonna work with him, but as you know, those two years that I he lasted, the same thing. Didn't work. it just didn't work. Right, you couldn't work with him. <laughs> Could not work with them. Right. And, uh, and those were difficult times financially for the schools. Yes, We've been they failing were. levies, what, six times in a row before it we was, got on the board? Yes, it was quite a few times. And people were being laid off. It was a horrible time for the Boardman schools, actually. Um, Irma Struble. Irma, she was the treasurer. Mm -hmm. She was a wonderful lady, and she did a very good job. Mm -hmm. Dick Selby. Dick Selby. Dick, I knew from uh, being involved in PTA at the high school. He was our high school and, principal. Uh, okay. Right, and he was, he had such a love for this school system. It was, you, you could never question his loyalty or his dedication. I mean, he was just, he just loved board. Larry Springer. Larry Springer, he was a great board of education member. He, he had the, he was in, he was a lawyer and he was very judicial in <laughs> his, um, decision making, but he was very powerful in why he made decisions. One of the things I remember, I don't know whether you remember, but we actually, we, hold, we held our board meetings in those days in the choral room at the high school. Right. We were down below and everybody else was up. Right. We had to have security at right. our meetings in those days. Right. Well, we had a few we incidents. A few, <laughs> a few incidents. How do you look at the Boardman schools today? Oh, I'm proud of them. No, I have always, um, I guess it's because having worked in the schools from the PTA point of view, having been on the board, having been a mother. My son's education was important to them, but they loved wrestling, they loved sports. But when they went to college, it all clicked. And they did extremely well. They all have master's degrees in uh, different subjects. And, and uh, the Boardman schools served them very well. And I, I, I feel that Boardman is just one of the, the best school systems in the area. And they have been since 1810, I might add, from when the academy was started. You weren't there then. Were no, you? I wasn't, oh, okay. <laughs> but I read their history. When did you retire from the school board and why? Um, in 1991, uh, Joe Hauser asked me if I would be interested in running now for judge trustee. Now Judge Joe Hauser. Now Judge Joe Hauser. He was on the school, on the uh, trustee, a uh, member of the board of trustees, and he asked me if I would possibly consider it. Well, it just so happened that year, a levy passed that we were trying to pass forever in mm -hmm. the school system. And I felt this sense that, you know, I've done what I could for the school system and maybe it's time to move on to a new challenge. And so, you and so I decided to trustee. run for the township. Mm -hmm. um, when did you, what year did you get elected for It was the trustee? for the 1992 was my first term. Okay. And how did you fare in that election? Uh, I was a top vote getter, I, I did very well. Uh, it was interesting to me because I came from this PTA, loving everybody environment, and the Board of Education was a plus, it was an upbeat kind of a thing. But boy, when you get into politics, it's a different story. And it was like a little shock to me. I had a, I had a scramble to realize what life was really about in the political mm -hmm. world. And were you the first Republican? I was the first woman elected. Mm -hmm. In 1945, one of the uh, 
gentleman that was on the board of trustees went to war and they appointed his wife to fill in for the year that he was gone, but I actually was the first woman elected. And who are your other fellow trustees? At that time, mm -hmm. it was John Cox and Joseph Hauser. And um, did you have a philosophy about your service as a trustee? Um, I always consider myself a public servant and not an elected official. And someone pointed that out. Someone in Boardman Civic, um, Don Westenbarger, said to me, well, what kind of a person are you going to be, a public servant or a an, um, politician? And I said, by all means, a public servant. And how and that, long did you, did you serve in the uh, 16 years. And what was your greatest accomplishment? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'd like to think that when I was involved that we hired the right people for the right jobs. And um, I, I believe in, in uh, hiring good people and letting them do their job. Mm -hmm. That's my philosophy. But I found out recently that it, that is not everybody's philosophy. Some people like to micromanage, and I am not a micromanager. And I hired the people, the best people I thought that could serve the community the best. And do you have any other political aspirations now? None. None? I'm 71 now. <laughs> I think it's time I, I sort of <laughs> stop after 24 you, years. You touched earlier on... Uh, on Carney McNicholas and how they were doing flex time when nobody was doing such right. things. Uh, you have, uh, we, we were talking before the interview, before uh, today, that you have a remarkable history with that company. Okay. You go back a few years. <laughs> how, yes. how long have you worked for that company in one form or another? Well, when it was McNicholas uh, Transportation, I was there 19 years. And then... Uh, Starting in 1958? In 1956. 56? Yes. And then... I was in kindergarten. Oh dear. God <laughs> well then, um, uh, Tom Carney, who's the former uh, county commissioner and Boardman Township trustee, he bought out the household division. And in 1978, 79, I went to work for him. So I've been there 29 years with him and 19 with the other company. So that's so, like almost 50 years. All right. Wow. Yeah. And uh, again, you, you were starting to say earlier that you way before computers were even computers and even before adding machines, you're in some sort of key punching. Oh, yes. Well, when I, when I started this comptometer um, school, I got a job at a and offices. It was in Hubbard, on Hubbard Road. And then I became interested in uh, computers. And I, um, it, when it, it was a very fluke. It was a fluke that I, I called IBM and they said, um, yeah, we have a class going on at night if you want to learn how to program uh, the computers. Well, in those days, the computers were like two by two boards that every time you wanted to change a function, you moved a, a, a wire and plugged it in somewhere else, and you key punched. You key punched, uh, and all these holes came up, and you put them through this huge computer, which was like six feet long, and it would sort through, and um, the board would tell it what to do and everything. And, and so that's why I decided to get into that. Well, fortunately, when I decided to quit a and and I put my resume out, Carney Mc, it was McNicholas Transportation at that time. They were looking for someone to help. So you were and way so, ahead of the curve in technology. <laughs> it was, it was uh, quite a, an experience, So yes. have you ridden that curve I mean, to, to, to no, technology uh, today? No, well, yeah, uh, today I run You're the You're internet savvy and... Right, and, but um, uh, then the next thing they went, they went to was tapes. And um, that was the next thing besides the, the key punch cards. Mm -hmm. Then they went to taping. And then, then they went into the little It's gotten a little simpler. Yeah, it, it has and really. And smaller. Really, it has. Right. Very good. And how has your life changed since you are done with being a trustee now? Like, what, are your, <laughs> what, do you, what do you do in your spare time? <laughs> uh, what do I do in my spare time? Um, I've always been a, 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 a reader. Mm -hmm. I always read at night. I always, after meetings and things, I just wanted to relax and just get in another world. And I, I've always read like late at night. Now I read whenever I want. Um, in I recent times, about, you must have been reading real late at night. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I read. I crochet. I watch grandchildren. We follow them. they they range from eight to fourteen. How many do you have? Uh, six, and they're all right in a row, like eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve and then 14. And uh, 
so it's a busy, busy life. I just, now I'm looking back, I can't remember how I did everything that I, I did. They need, they always say, you need something done, you go to a busy person. <laughs> it's you. Uh, Lane, I've always found you to be, uh, have one of the most positive attitudes of anybody that I know. Oh. Uh, you kind of shared your philosophy of government. You have a philosophy of life. Um, I, I just, uh, I like people. Uh, I believe very firmly in a God and a faith. And I'm very strong on family. Um, to put it in words, I, I, I guess, I don't know. Just we we're passing through. And uh, it's not the destination in life that counts, but the journey. And uh, I just want to make sure I take the right roads. Yeah. Well, we're about time over for this time of this edition of Borman Biography. But I would just like to thank you for coming here and telling us your story. Oh, thank and, you. And um, thank you for your contributions to the Borman Local Schools and Borman as a community. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Elaine, we spent an awful lot of uh, long Monday evenings <laughs> together during our tenure on the board. And I frankly, in thinking back, um, can't remember uh, an issue over which we ever disagreed. I, no, I, can't, I, can't, I couldn't think of one, because I, mean, I think we always kind of put boardman schools first, had fun. Um, I remember at a at, uh, little surprise party they had for me when I retired from the school board, uh, you paid me a compliment that I always remember. You always said that I had a special passion for the Boardman Schools you and do. all of that. Well, let me return the compliment by saying that uh, I always thought you had and continue to have a special passion, not just for the um, for the Boardman Schools, but for I think everything that's best about Boardman. Uh, you're to me Boardman at its best, and it's been my privilege for unbelievably 25 years to call you not only a colleague but a neighbor and a friend. Uh, we had a great run together, and it's really neat. I, I find myself smiling as much as Don't I find you cry. smiling. Don't make me cry. It's great to share your story oh. with us today on Board and Biography. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank Elaine. you, Mark. You bet. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. We hope you have it once again enjoyed this edition of Borman Biography. If you have any suggestions of other individuals you will like to see profiled on this program, please pass them along and we will do our best to get them scheduled. Until then, we hope you will continue to support the Borman Local Schools Television Network.